Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Who? Nayla Stayput. Stayput, right? yeah. Yeah, yeah correct. Okay. Yeah, I have. Well done. <laughs> yeah. So it's so nice to meet you, Nayla. Me um, too. We, we, we don't really know each other, so you could introduce yourself. You could tell the people watching who you are, what you do. Mm -hmm. I think you work in the games industry, is that right? Yeah. Yes, I do. Um, so my name is Nela. Uh, I work currently for uh, a company called Cooperative Innovations. Uh, and we're based in, well, we were based in Leeds, but now with the, since the lockdown started, like we're kind of like work from home. So we're kind of spread all around Yorkshire, uh, like Sheffield and, and all the parts of Leeds and stuff. Um, and we make multiplayer VR games. Uh, most, like recently we released Space Team VR. It's like based on a mobile game, uh, which is fun to play if you have a, uh, like a VR headset. Um, and we uh, so i made the make the characters for the uh, the games and i also do like some like art direction and like uh, you know helping out the other artists like what they have to do and like if they need anything and like kind of stay in line with the the art style and that's my job mm -hmm. so i've had a look at some of these games so there's raiders of Verda and space yeah. team and space team yeah. is very much virtual reality and and if you're yeah, lucky yeah, yeah. enough to have one of those oculus headsets and the controllers they're very much about collaboration and being in the space yeah. with other people and exactly all of that and, and, like and the cool thing fun. is yeah yeah, yeah it is because the uh because it tracks like your head movements and your hands so you pick a character that you want to be and you move around your hands and your head and you talk and you see people's lips moving and like moving around and stuff. So if you play with like family and friends, or, like people you know, you can actually tell who they are, even if they're not speaking, because you know what they do, like because you know them. It's, it's pretty cool. Like, and I found it quite fun, like because we're all working from home now, to to see my colleagues in VR with like some crazy accessories and stuff. So yeah, is that is definitely a lot of fun. That's interesting in a couple of ways because i was reading something the other day that there are a small percentage of the population who they find it difficult to recognize other people's faces but they can recognize yeah, yeah. their body movements and and the way they yeah. Walk. yeah and yeah. and the other thing i was thinking about as well because you said at the moment we're in this extended lockdown corona covid Mm. With things like VR, you can be anywhere, can't you, with your friends? Uh, yeah. That is one thing at the moment. I mean, we're recording this online because there is no other way at the moment that we could practically do this interview. So, so it it's it's not just the future; it is here right now. Oh yeah, definitely. And, and it will definitely, I imagine, be a more prominent feature of games. One thing I noticed: you, you need an Oculus headset. And, they are quite expensive at the moment, but I imagine like a lot of technologies, the prices will come down and they'll be wider. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and they, Oculus released like headsets as a Quest, and as is a Quest 2, which got released like yesterday, I think. What was it today? I don't remember. But anyways, so those are like the price of like a, a games console and you don't need a PC or anything. You just need the headset and it works like on like a phone, basically that you download like the games onto it you put it on and you play and that's it. And so which makes it a lot more accessible because you can just literally be anywhere, like in your bedroom and your living room or the garden and stuff and it, yeah, it works and, fine. And in the game, the, the characters, they, they have avatars and you said you talk about how these are designed, the characters, but I suppose this also has real world applications as well. Like, you know, if you're meeting with your doctor, health professional, uh, meeting with colleagues, you know, it does apply to those things. And who knows, you know, maybe if we're yeah. having interviews like this in the future, we will be in the same space in one way or other. Uh -huh. So I'm fascinated to know how you ended up on this journey, because some of the people watching this today will be 11, 12, 13. Mm. And I'm trying to imagine what were you doing at 12, 13, 14? And did you make certain decisions then that if it influenced you know you on this journey 
not really then. Like I was when I was that age, like twelve to fourteen, I was interested in computers, but like uh, scripting more and making websites. And I was like, you know, like basic stuff like HTML, CSS kind of stuff, and uh, like pictures and like I just made websites with lots of pictures basically, and. So I wasn't really thinking of like games or, or yeah, doing 3D in general. Like that was just seemed like something that was just like, I don't know, like not something I could do. I, like it's a lot easier now, a lot more accessible back, back then. It's just like websites, it's cool. Yeah. Uh, so I did, cause I'm from Belgium. So I did a bachelor's in, in Belgium, which was about making websites and web design and, and it's what I ended up doing then. I, I became a web designer and I worked for two years as a web designer. And then I thought, like, actually, I'm not having fun anymore. Like, this is not, not what I want to keep doing for the rest of, like, for many, many years. So uh, during my course, uh, my bachelor course, we dabbled a little bit in 3D. And I actually thought, you know, this is kind of fun. Like, maybe I want to do more of that. But I didn't know where to start. So I thought, like, I heard from someone about an, a master course in, in Bournemouth, um, in the UK, obviously. And it's, it was more aimed at, like, 3D animation. But they taught us a bit about, you know, like, modeling, texturing, like, everything else to do with 3D. And uh, I was like, okay, you know what, this is interesting. So I quit my job. And, and it was a master's as well, which is just the one year. So it just seemed ideal because I had a bachelor degree already. So, so yeah, I went to go and do 3D in, in the UK. So, so these are decisions that you made later in life. And I'm trying yeah. to imagine, you know, when you were in your teenage years. So, so I think based on what you said, you wouldn't be one of those children in school who really stood out as being geeky or tech. You probably... We're just happy to be part of the crowd and probably make safe decisions. Not too many um, risks at that point. Well, I did a bit of everything. Like I liked scripting. I liked it was when you know, like all those old messenger, like MSN and stuff, were becoming a thing. Like we didn't even have Facebook or YouTube. There was it was just like yeah, ICQ, MSN, that that kind of stuff. And actually, like my. Uh, my classmates, they thought I was a bit weird that I was like into computers to begin with, like just computers. And I was like, well, like it's, it's normal. Like I, I kind of like used my, cause we had like a, a calculator, like smart calculator. I couldn't put in like, I put in my maths formulas in there and I like made a script to just kind of like give me the, uh, the solution. And so I was just like, well, there you go. Like I'm just, you know, like you laugh with me. But actually, I'm I'm able to do this. So, yeah. You know, so that, I showed that, them. That sounds cool, though, because what you're doing yeah. is you're recognizing the the potential that certain tools have to help you. And you're thinking, well, yeah. I don't need to do this on paper. I can I can use something I have available to me. Exactly. So, <laughs> so would you say that you've had a smooth journey into working in video games or have there been a few curveballs or obstacles on the way oh oh there have yeah, okay. yeah. tell, tell us about some so i i work as a character artist now but i it was just one i want to do when i graduate from bournemouth but i worked as a 3d artist first so just making like anything in 3d and um it's not easy to find work as a 3D artist in the games industry. Like often, like uni doesn't prepare you enough to find a job right at, straight out of uni. So you have to do a lot of like work yourself and, and like work on your portfolio a lot, especially with like characters. There's a lot that is um, important that you have to know like anatomy and, and all that. So there's a lot of like studying that you still need to do. And so after I graduated from uh, uni, I worked in VFX for a little bit, just doing little bits and pieces to do with 3D. And then I worked in augmented reality uh, because, and they hired me because I had like a web design experience. So I had to do a bit of everything. I had to do a bit of 
of graphics and 3D and a bit of scripting. And all the while I was working on my portfolio in the evenings, uh, just so I could be like a 3D artist or character artist in the games industry. And I wasn't, I thought first I wanted to go into animation, but then I met more and more people who worked in the games industry. Uh, and I was in London and all these people seem so passionate and creative and it seemed a lot more like that, that that was what I wanted to do and that's how I thought like oh actually I want to work in the games industry and I should tailor my portfolio to, to fit that because making 3D art for games is different than for VFX and animation and all that so uh, I had to figure out like what it was I had to do and what my portfolio what, what kind of art I had to put in my portfolio to be able to get a job in the games industry, basically. So, so it sounds like it, it's, it has been an uphill struggle in many ways, and you've had to really stick at it. And I'm sure you had yeah, yeah. relatives and friends saying, Naila, wouldn't you just rather do something a little bit easier, like work in a shop or a cafe or something like that? You were like, no, no, I know what I'm doing. Just trust me. Yeah. Um, my my parents have always kind of supported me in my decisions, but I didn't have like family members say like, why don't you, you know like move back to Belgium and find a real job? I'm like, I have a real job. What are you talking about? Like I do make cool things, and I guess to some it doesn't seem like that that's like a viable career. Like, can you actually make money by making pretty things for for games? Is like is that a thing? I was like, yeah, it is, and and I earn money now doing it. So yeah, it's it's it is pretty cool that you get to do like your hobby basically as a job. I have to say as well, I'm a little bit curious because you, you know, I would say you sound very European. You've travelled around a lot. Why not go somewhere like London or Paris or Milan or New York if you if you know because they also do create video games instead. You chose to come and work in Leeds, in Yorkshire. What was it about Leeds that attracted you? Uh, I don't know. Like, I like the people in Yorkshire a lot. Like, I wasn't sure when I moved, because I was living in London and Oxford bef uh, before I moved to Leeds. And, like, because I had a few friends up north, and uh, not necessarily Leeds, but, like, uh, uh, Yorkshire and Middlesbrough, and then even more up north, like, Newcastle. And it doesn't really matter that much. Like, where there's studios all over the place, and there's events like games events going on like all year round in London and in the Midlands and in Birmingham and Manchester, all that. So there's, and even up in is Bradford, it in yeah, 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 Bradford and Middlesbrough, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, so there's plenty going on, and there's you could still travel to see because when I when there was like games events going on, like I just travel down south or wherever and uh, just to catch up with friends as well. And we all saw each other like working in the games industry. So they're all there and they're like, how are you doing, etc. And 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 at the same time, seeing like what games they've been making and stuff. So it's it's really like it's same with like um, other countries. Uh, there's There's other events going on games events in the rest of Europe and but for me like I've been living in the UK for like 10 years so all my friends are there like my life is is in the UK so it just made sense to stay so, yeah so I've got just two more questions today yes. one of them is I was thinking so we were we talked about pandemic and being kind of confined working from home Mm -hmm. But if, let's just say in a in a month or two things are starting to ease and we're going back to some sense of normality, for you, it's, it's <laughs> yes, yeah. It strikes me though that video games development characters, it's not just your work it, for you. It sounds like it's very much part of what you do, and I can imagine that you might be hanging out with other people outside of your sort of work hours and maybe going places. Are there certain things in and around Leeds, maybe as far as Bradford, that you might gravitate to with your friends? Like, a, a, you know, a, a meetup, a, a, a particular venue? Is, can you think of any anywhere you've been or yeah. you might like to go? 
Well, I have been to Gamayo quite a lot. That's the biggest one in Yorkshire. That was like half yearly. I think it's online now, but that that's that was always pretty fun. And a lot of people from I think all over the UK come to Gamayo. Um, and then there's uh, Animax in Cambridge, which is organized by people from the, or uh, associated with TSAT University. So there's that one. I think Animax is online now. I'm not sure when exactly it is, but it's like around now, uh, I believe. And it's online as well. So we just, you know, like join that. Um, uh, what else? There's in Manchester, there was a lot of things going on as well. So I would often go to Manchester from Leeds, which was easy enough in the evenings. And uh, there's some BAFTA related things in, in Manchester. Um, from Yuki, uh, Yuki Games Industry, uh, the, yeah. Um, U UK Interactive Entertainment is. Thank yeah, you. Yuki, yeah, that's <laughs> right. I'm a bit embarrassed. I couldn't remember what it's it for. But yeah, like they organise events as well uh, around the country, and and the, they did a few in Manchester that I attended, where like uh, CEOs from other studios uh, came to give a talk and stuff, and then yeah, we just meet up and hang out, and um, like I think there's a few local meetups in Manchester too. I'm not sure about Leeds though, but yeah, Gamio is the biggest one. Like so Jamie Sefton, he organizes a few events for that. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. And so the final question, um, somebody might be watching this and be really inspired and they want to do some of the things that you've done, but they're 13, 14. So traveling to mm -hmm. Manchester, Cambridge, Newcastle is not really going to be feasible for them. So they've decided yeah. They're going to do a particular course online or somebody's going to they're going to ask a book now some people would say oh unity or or maya or something like that. would you say that there's a particular kind of route or study for this is for them to learn themselves at home online mm -hmm. or whatever that that would be useful to them they wouldn't be too confined or restricted is there something that you would suggest or recommend I feel like if you're like 14, you should just do what you think is the most fun to you. Like if you feel like if you've stumbled across Unity and you found some tutorials online like YouTube and stuff to do Unity, then you should do Unity. If you feel like you should do like more Unreal, then try Unreal Engine and, and same with like using Maya or Blender or any kind of 3D software that you come across or ZBrush, which is used more by character artists if you like making characters in 3D. Uh, it just depends and just try and see what you like best, like what's the most fun to you. Like don't do something because you think it's the most popular thing or even like a style or anything, like just do whatever you like to do and ex experiment a lot because it doesn't matter really. Like especially when you're, you know, when you're still young and you like try, you can try out things and, it, you know, like just, yeah, try and experiment as much as you can and just keep it fun, really. Yeah. And what even about just pen and paper, you know, people who might envisage yeah. they're going into character design, just just fine liners and, and, and yeah. notebooks and trying to look at other people and sketch them and then imagine turning those into fantasy characters. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Like, the 2D artists, so pen and paper, or even like drawing on in, in Photoshop or an iPad, if you if you have one or your parents have one or just anything, it's all fine. Like that's a that's actually like a career path as well. So it's and I had to do some what they call like live drawing as well. So sketching on the people and just to learn uh, anatomy and stuff like because to help me. To become a better character artist so yeah definitely like anything Naila your story your journey all of your tips and techniques that's really 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 helpful so thank you it's been a real pleasure to chat to you today and we're going to go off now and visit something else but cool. thank you so all right. say You're goodbye. Welcome. Bye. bye and okay. <laughs>